Hello, so this is a problem that we're going to do that involves electric potential, um, electric field, and how that relates to the law of conservation of energy. Okay, I've taken the liberty of writing the given goals and the formulas, but I'll promise I'll go through each one as we go along. It's just to save time a little bit. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're given... Um, what we call two plates. Uh, this is what I know as a linear accelerator, um, apparently called an atom smasher. And what it is, it's used to accelerate charged particles, in this case a proton, that's important, um, at very, very high speeds. If you can see here, this initial speed of 1.6 times 10 to the uh, sixth power meters per second, that's really fast, okay? And in a short span of distance, our delta x, its final speed is going to be uh, about 300% more than that, uh, 3 million meters per second. That is pretty fast, okay? Uh, for whatever purpose, to use it for either radiation treatment, um, x-rays, um, gamma radiation, or something of that high energy uh, charged particle, okay? so. All that I highlighted are given, but I'm going to outline something. Now, if you're like me, if you know that your, the charged particle is a proton, immediately that should mean two things. That the charge on the proton is that much, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs, and the mass of the proton is positive as well, but won't need that for the formula and the mass is really really small as well negative uh, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms okay and then we have the initial speed delta x final speed now we can actually solve this using a kinematics equation but I'm going to show the purpose of this problem is to show how electric potential which is related to electric potential energy, uh, can be solved in terms of uh, energy equation from physics one. Okay, and what we're looking for is the how much electric potential difference will be needed to accelerate the proton to that much, to that final speed, and what magnitude of electric field, assuming that it's uniform, there's no reason to think not to. Um, will be needed to accelerate it that much. Okay, so we're going to start off with a basic definition of electric potential. Look at the notes, and the same way that electric field is the electric force per unit charge, um, this one, electric potential, uh, is, le is electric potential energy per unit charge, so we'll need that equation. And this is actually a take on this the law of conservation of energy. I personally like to use this equation, but for this problem we're going to use this one. And what this states is that um, this zero right here is actually the work done by non-conservative forces, but it just happens that the, there's no friction in this case. There's no reason to think that there's anything hindering the proton from going one place to another. So only the electric field is applying the force and accelerating. So we're going to use this equation right here. No need to know that. Okay? And last but not least, we're going to need something that relates electric uh, potential to electric field. How to relate a uh, scalar quantity, this is just the magnitude of it, to uh, wait, a vector quantity to a scalar quantity. Okay? And um, for these purposes, we're not going to need that. We're assuming that the electric field is just parallel to the motion as you can see right here okay let's go ahead and get started plug and chug so what we're looking for first is the electric potential okay and I'm going to start with my energy equation I'm going to write it a little bit differently Okay, 
Now the KE is kind of easy. It's just the difference. Oops, final first. While the PE, I'm going to modify my equation here. Okay, and then I'm going to solve for PE, multiply both sides by Q, cancels out, and you get this equation. Okay, and that can actually plug in right there. We'll use that later. Introducing. There we go. Because remember, we're looking for for this, All right? So I'm going to move that kinetic energy to that side. Remember, you do that by subtracting both sides by the delta Ke. Then you divide both sides by Q to isolate the delta V. Good. I'm just going to go right here to save room. And from here, break down the kinetic energy. This is actually the charge of a proton. Okay, but look at this. This is common, so I'm going to bring that on the outside. Okay, and that's just simply one half m or m over two vf squared minus vi squared, but then we have q put the p on the bottom. And there we go. Get a nice equation where I can plug in all our variables. Don't forget the minus sign. Okay, because that means the potential is actually going uh, the other way. It's going from high potential to a low potential. Um, mass is not negative, but okay, the charge is actually positive. Make sure to put your unit so you know uh, how things cancel out later on. Um, keeping in mind what the units for potential are. Okay, remember to put your <laughs> final minus initial, but don't forget that they're squared individually. Don't square the the difference. And the units here should actually end up being meter squared, second squared. Okay, because it's all squared. You can only subtract things that are the same units. Um, Okay. Now I'm going to take a timeout. And show that the units of this should be volts. The volt is equivalent to joules per column. Or if you want to get uh, a bit more technical than that, it's kilogram, meter squared, second squared over kilogram over column as you can see we have all the components here kilogram meter squared second squared columns which is this right here the top part is joules so this does eventually uh, end up being volts now if you can't calculate all of that you notice that the minus sign still stays and you get something that is pretty high voltage. That's uh, about 41,000, 42,000 volts, okay?
if you want to accelerate a proton to that to those speeds so it's safely say that that is high voltage and if there's power directly connected to those plates I would say uh, don't touch that okay but we're not done yet the next step is actually not too bad um, we're going to use the formula for that relates electric field to electric potential but now I'm solving for what electric field will need to increase it by that uh, much uh, and this one is just dependent on electric field is dependent on the distance put that by negative of the x so if you notice this will actually make our electric field magnitude positive that actually makes sense so the potential difference is negative remember this is five centimeters or I'm going to put that in terms of SI units like zero zero same things and this was negative for it's already negative okay and so these two negatives end up being a positive and the units volt or meter is actually equivalent to Newton per column the units of electric field strength okay which is what we're looking for okay so I can put in the per column and should not we get a positive number of a really strong electric field and there we go okay now this video is a little bit long but I just wanted to show an example once again of how um, electric potential and electric field and electric potential energy are all related together and how an example of that could be used in a certain problem okay enjoy ciao